Every so often, when I'm scouring the shops for interesting, illuminated tat, I find something that is so fresh and distinctive that it's actually quite inspiring. It gives you ideas of what you could do along the same lines. And this is one of these things. It's a solar garden light. I'm actually just going to remove the stake off the bottom here because it's not really needed at the moment. And it means it fits in the screen better. But this is quite unusual because it doesn't just have a light underneath, a colour changing light underneath, but it also has uh, a pink LED under these little tendrils and then it's got warm white lighting around the edge, so it's multi sections of lighting. Let me show you it. One moment please. And here it is in all its glory. It's got the warm white LEDs at the edge, I think it's just two of them going by the image I'm seeing here. And indeed, looking down the end of it, now I think about it, it's got the little pink uh, illumination up here. This uh, plastic actually comes off, revealing the, the illumination. And it's got the uh, LED lighting down, the colour changing LED lighting down there. This is inspirational. Does this come off? Oh, it does come off. It just pulls out. Oh, it's a surface mount LED in there. That's not what I was expecting. I thought this was going to be a wee cap over some... Uh, are like a standard five or three millimeter LED. Okay, let's bring the light back. Watch your eyes. The light is back. Let's take this to bits. I shall turn it off. This is so inspirational. I wonder how they're, they must be using, to get the color changing LED, they must be using the standard circuit, the little uh, four pin chip, and the little inductor that steps voltage up. This is all guesswork. Let's start opening it. But they'll be using the diode and capacitor for that. But I wonder if they've just got resistors leading to other LEDs. Or is it going to surprise me the circuitry? It's on its way out. Quite complex. This is when I could really do... Oh, it's a big cell as well. It's a triple A. Uh, what about this bit here? This is glued in. That's slightly annoying, but that is just the solar panel, so it's not really that much of an issue. Here is the main circuit board, right? Tell you what, I'm going to have to, I don't have the options here for taking pictures. I may end up taking this back to the man, actually. I really like this a lot. Uh, but here's a little boost circuit. The inductor must be in the back. Let's find out. I'll zoom down. This That way you're going to actually see something. I also, maybe just tame the exposure a little bit so you can actually see what's going on here. And I shall pop this out. Now, I did notice that the pink LED didn't quite 100% line up with the uh, hole in the front, but that's okay. It's not a bad thing, it's, it's fine. So on the back of this, I'm expecting the switch and an inductor. There's the little inductor. There's the colour changing LED. And that means this dinky little five pin uh, chip here is the... Well, I'll see if I can get a number off it. Uh, that's the one that uh, boosts the voltage up and controls the solar uh, cell charging of the cell and uh, then regenerates the high voltage and detects the dusk. Look at all these extra component positions. What's this about? But there's the diode and there's the capacitor that then smooths it to the DC. Right. One moment, please. I'm just going to explore this a little bit more. Resume video. The chip is apparently called a capital A, small a, small e, small d, capital B, which I think is just a generic code. I'm not really sure if that's actually the chip number. I suppose it makes sense to have capital letters and lowercase to increase the number of combinations. It is effectively the classic four pin chip. Interesting to note that the nickel metal hydride cell is always connected to the charge circuitry in here. So when the solar panel is receiving energy, it will be charging that cell even if the switch is off. The switch is only switching power to the inductor. So even in the storage, the circuitry in here will effectively be running, but it's very low current, I guess. Um, but it's not going to be boosting the voltage up. In the event of the switch being on, the chip, when it detects the dusk from the voltage from the solar panels going low, it starts pulsing this inductor. A 120 microhenry inductor, brown, red, brown. When it does that, this end is positive initially, and this end is pulled negative. And then when it turns back off again, that end, as the magnetic field claps, that end goes negative, that end goes positive, and it effectively puts it in series with this nickel metal hydride cell and boosts the voltage up. But because it's got the red, green, blue LED that needs continuous DC without interrupting in interruptions, it goes through the S4 Schottky diode 
and charges a 100 nanofarad capacitor. That then feeds a separate power bus for the LEDs, including the two Wormai LEDs are just directly across that. The red, green, blue LED has a 2.2 ohm resistor in series, and the pink LED has a 10 ohm resistor in series. That is it. It's quite a nice circuit board, I have to say. Even more so is the fact that the... If I zoom back out here, this panel here is quite interesting because I thought when I pulled the little sprig of uh, tendrils out that that hole was going straight through so it could sit in the LEDs, but that is a closed hole which means that water can't really get in through that. The only place water can go is down the edges here because the end of this is open. And when it gets down the edge here, it will be shed completely over the electronic area and go down these drain holes at the side. When it goes down the drain holes at the side, it comes out at the edge here and will theoretically be on the outside lip of this. There is one slight issue. The glue that they've used to seal this, the solar panel. Here's the bit that holds the solar panel in. Here's the glue that is uh, sealing that hole. They've not sealed it. So water will potentially get in here and drip into the electronic compartment. This is just a peril of things like this. And because that solar panel is down a little recess, it's going to catch that water. But that happens. And well, if if you're one of us, you can basically just make everything waterproof. You could finish waterproofing that up. You could coat the circuit board completely in conformal coating. You could get rid of this switch, which is going to be the unreliable bit. And you could make this thing last for a very long time. Well, there is another LED. The other LED has its own resistor and it's just basically at right angles to the other one. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe they've got other lights with uh, similar stuff. Maybe I should brighten this image up just a little bit. Yes, I should. But anyway, that is fundamentally it. Uh, it's an interesting little light. It's really well engineered. Uh, very attractive indeed. This is definitely what I would call a win. One of the things that inspires me here is the fact that these little tendrils, you could actually do something similar with uh, 3D printer filament, the clear stuff, because it has that slight fibre optic nature. And you could make a little adapter that went in the base that the just not extruded filament, but just pieces of filament uh, pre-extrusion could just be pressed into that and then you know you could either put little caps in the end that were 3d printed or you could just heat the end and actually make little blobs in the end very interesting it's really inspirational that they're doing so much with one little solar light it's effectively got three lighting sections the rgb the pink and the warm white very impressive